Well, every year around this time, Idaho's native steelhead are reintroduced into the Boise River. Now, so far this season, there have been two releases by Idaho's Department of Fishing Game, with one more planned before Thanksgiving next week, much to the delight of local anglers. But have you ever wondered why or how those fish are brought in? Our Brian Holmes spent the day in Hell's Canyon to track down the answers to those questions from the water's edge. There's only one thing that would bring brave men to stand beneath the shadow of Hell's Canyon Dam on a cold mid-November morning. Because I'm retired and I got nothing else to do. <laughs> All right, well, there is one other thing. The thought of snagging a salmon from the Snake River. That's what we're trying to catch and hopefully a steelhead too. Duke Johnson and his friend Dan figure they found a good spot to get a squeeze on a steelhead at the end of its nearly 900 mile migration. Yeah, they can't go no farther. They bump their nose right there. But as luck would have it, you guys could have picked a better day. <laughs> Duke and Dan's hands would stay fish free. We got to say the right fish at the right time. <laughs> but just a couple of casts away at the Hell's Canyon fish trap, that time is right now. And we're at 109 now. Lou Nalder with the Idaho Department of Fish and Game is busy counting steelhead that come in from the river. We'd like to take about 230 fish out of here today. Despite the simplicity of the task, Hi. Lon rarely tires of watching the fish jump and wiggle their way up the chute, section by section, finishing with a final flop into a hopper. This fish ladder is just one step of a program Idaho Power created more than five decades ago. Back in 1955, the building of the Hell's Canyon complex began, a hydroelectric trio consisting of the Hell's Canyon, Oxbow, and Brownlee Dams, a series of structures that would eventually provide 70% of the state's electricity. But stopping the natural flow of the Snake River for the production of cheap power came with a price, the reduction in the natural populations of Idaho's Chinook salmon and steelhead. So in 1961, the idea of a hatchery was spawned. And since then, generations of adult trout like these have taken a ride in a truck 23 miles upstream to the Oxbow Fish Hatchery. Oxbow Hatchery was the first hatchery built by Idaho Power. It's been here a lot of, a lot of years. Fully funded by Idaho Power and operated by Idaho Fish and Game, Oxbow has helped hatch a lot of salmon and steelhead. Our goal for the fall is to keep 600 fish for broodstock. Female. 300 males, 300 females. 65, on to. Jeff Segerman has been the hatchery manager for the last four years, and while 600 fish doesn't seem like a lot, he says they will be able to produce nearly 900,000 fertilized eggs hatchery Chinook male. by next spring. 70. This is one of four different hatcheries built by Idaho Power in the 1960s, on to. each boasting a survival rate of more than 75 percent. From our group of four Idaho Power hatcheries, we release a total of 6.8 million salmon and steelhead annually. Paul Abbott is Idaho Power's senior hatchery biologist. He says the industry has come a long way in the 30 years he's been involved. 57. We refer to ourselves now as co-managers. Uh, we work together and it's, it shows in terms of the number of fish that we have coming back sharing of scientific knowledge and technology and uh, the availability of fish both for sport harvest and tribal use. It's, it's a very nice working relationship. 53. Aside from being a regulatory requirement, Abbott says an operation like this is important to Idaho Power employees. It's important to me personally because I don't want to see these fish go away. Uh, I think they're just an amazing animal, uh, what they go through in their lifetime. It's, it's still remarkable to me. There's also a bonus feature to this fish program. Whatever steelhead from today's catch not set aside for spawning will be split among the hatchery's collaborators. The Nez Perce Tribe, Oregon's Fish and Wildlife, and Idaho's Fish and Game, who in turn usually sends its steelhead south to be released in the Boise River, where an assemblage of anglers in waders is usually waiting. Any fish is a good fish, but steelhead's what we're after. <laughs> Boise native Rick Tuttle says he is thankful for the modified migration. Now that it's man-made, I'll still take what I can get. And because of the conservation work done in Hell's Canyon, the getting is usually pretty good. We have good steelhead runs every year anymore. Brian Holmes, <laughs> Idaho's News Channel 7. How about those pictures? Now the steelhead and the salmon that pass through the Idaho Power hatcheries are all marked and tagged and tracked, both physically and genetically, 
If you would like to get a look inside one of their fish facilities, Idaho Power says when the gates open, they're open, so feel free to stop by. And in the meantime, happy fishing.